Okay, um, this short video will give you a little bit instruction to um, download the Protege and then uh, make it run on the uh, Windows-based computer. This is a Windows-based computer. And first you go to the Protege's um, web page where it's like protege.stanford.ed and there are two things that could be used. The first is the Web Prodigy, which is a web platform hosted at Stanford. And you could also download that package for your local use. If you have a local server available, you can also install it there. And um, for this video, I used to download now to download a, a newest version of the desktop uh, edition. And here is the Prodigy de Desktop 5.0 beta. You just uh, download this beta version. And it is about it, it is a, a zip package in about like a 15 uh, megabytes. So after you download this one, and you could uh, unzip it and see the internal file. And the convenient thing about this uh, desktop edition is it doesn't have any installation requirement. You just have to unzip it and make sure that your uh, Java environment is um, up to date it's in new enough versions so that you could uh, directly use it run it under the uh, windows environment so first we could see this it's the uh, unzip we could unzip it extract it to your uh, disk and it takes about like a few seconds to finish and once you unzip it and that's the file you use to launch your a prodigy application and it's really straightforward you don't have to worry about uh, to the installation but there's one uh, crucial things about this you have to uh, literally add the Java runtime environments to your uh, system path so this is the uninstalled uh, package and you could see there are some uh, folders and there are some uh, single files and the only one we have to use is uh, there's a run which is the Windows batch file and this is the the BAT file used to launch the uh, Java based desktop edition of the Prodigy so before we do this we will have to make sure uh, the runtime the Java runtime environment it's uh, added to the system path so you could go to um, the Windows system settings and to find uh, the advanced system settings and from there you could find a um, environment variables from that environment variables you locate uh, your path variables so here it's my path variables and uh, you could edit it and make sure you are adding it uh, the your Java instead the Java runtime environment installation into the path. So it, if that's not installed, I mean not installed. That if that's not uh, specified, add it specifically add it to the variable environments. Then uh, the batch file won't work properly. So that's the only one thing, and you have to locate where your Java is. Um, my case, it's in the program files and Java and JRE7 and in the binary folder. Okay, once you set this um, environment variables into it, now you could uh, directly run this Prodigy uh, by double clicking on the run button, I mean the run file, and it's gonna start launching it based on the Java runtime environment. So no installation is necessary, and we really, uh, it's really easy to use. Okay, so um, this environment is a little bit, sh a little bit uh, in terms of resolution, it's a little bit tiny. And once you open a new, uh, I mean, just turn on this uh, Prodigy, it's gonna give you a systematic uh, assigned URI or the IRI, what now uh, the W3C code. So uh, HTTP on top of the screen, HTTP semanticweb.org. This is my computer's name, Ontologies in 2014, 9, Untitled Ontology 9. So that's the system generated ontology name. 
and it's very similar to your um, it's very similar to the um, database management system which uh, goes pretty much like giving you a file name for you to start with so then you could also give your specific um, address or IRIs by typing your personal address or something that is unique over the web uh, con in the web context okay so now we could start building the ontology and on the right panel you see a default uh, statistics, statistics which is about an ontology matrix and uh, class axioms object property axioms and so on so right now it has nothing because we have not built anything on, um, on the ontology now there's one critical or well, it's a really convenient uh, instruments here it's on the bottom of the screen there's an ontology import and ontology prefix on general class axioms so look at the ontology import uh, there's a direct import which means if you have other ontologies that you want to employ into your own ontologies then you could add this direct uh, direct import into it so let's try to uh, import an ontology in a specific file so for my case um, I have a time ontology which is on um, let me see if I can find it um, that's on my um, a little bit longer story um, that's on my Google Drive I have a ontology um, unfortunately I don't have it with oh yes I do okay so I have a time ontology which is an open ontology a lot of application make use of and uh, this is a, a manually in imports the uh, the time ontology so I like to uh, import it into my ontology structure and then I click finish now it says this is the direct import from w3.org 2006 time ontology and it has um, since this file is my local thing so uh, it's gonna show me where my local drive is okay now after I import this then I click on the entity and uh, you see a top or the superclass of everything which is the code of thing and I double click on the thing before uh, I supposed to just go here before I do that um, so there are a few classes to being um, present meaning it's due to the import of that time ontology but it was not here and all these things were not here before and uh, imports that time ontology so for this time ontology it has uh, some basic time entities some temporal entities like instance or interval proper interval and date interval and so on and it also gives um, it's for instance if we click on the object property we're gonna see a few object property that has been um, defined in that time ontology for instance there are some interval based on um, properties like interval after interval contents and there are also some uh, data properties like the date or um, day of year days and the XML date time and XML uh, schemas the date time like a data properties okay so now this is uh, what if you need it to import other ontologies then you could do it but if you don't then you just uh, completely forget it and you just start creating your own ontologies okay so now I like to create uh, just uh, simple things um, we have students and student enroll in courses so they are if we think a little bit and technically there are three classes student and um, course well I should say there are two, cl two classes student and a course now if you want to involve uh, another co class called persons then you could identify that the student is a subclass of person so let's create that which is under the super uh, the super class of thing so the first is to add a subclass to this thing and click on it and you could give names to your class so let's say I want to capitalize uh, this is my class called student 
and you could also have new uh, entity options which differentiate from the regular standardization you could also use the separator like uh, the like slash or the colons the, by default that's a uh, the pound okay so I don't want to change anything about that so you could see that the IRI of this class it's gonna be um, the address of the ontology and then separator it's a fragment the separator the pound and student so I click on it and I have a um, entity or a class called a student now if you highlight this student or click on the student just once you're gonna see the right hand side you can add some annotation to it including a comment so I could add some comment to it for instance I could select a comment and then I say uh, this is a oops, I just want to type this is a class student class for student enrollment so this is just a comment like you are doing a comment on the on the coding scheme and you could go to the bottom right um, about the students some properties so you could say this is a subclass of something else or this is a you could add some general uh, class axioms but in terms of RDF this is not uh, the general class axioms it's not appropriate and subclass it, it is appropriate you could have a subclass by using the uh, RDF schema and something like a disjoint or disjoint unit union of or target for keys and members now for the members you could uh, think of it this is an object oriented uh, paradigms and you can add a member or the instances to the student that's our that members are um, individuals to that class so I created a class called student and likewise I want to you have to make sure that uh, the first button here is add subclasses the second is add sibling class the third is to delete so if you uh, the thing is highlighted and you click on the add subclasses it's gonna be a subclass of the thing if you click on the students and you click add sibling it's gonna add a class that is at the same position as the student so for my case I want to create another class called course so that's a course I type in course here so I have another course uh, class okay and then I could do uh, some properties um, for instance I want to um, make some assertion about some students taking some course and a course has, uh, let's say, first I want to initiate some members. So for students, um, I could co easily go to there's individual tabs, which is here. Just click on the individual tabs. Right now, the student, whatever entities or whatever class you selected, it's going to give you the, all the available instances or individuals so for students let's say I want to create a new member or a, a new instance so let's say this is Alex so just type uh, the identities that you like and I want one more let's say Tom so that's two instances and in terms of its description you can also add the annotation to this by adding comments or any labels so to speak if you like the need the labels and you could also have some other for instance if there are um, individual equivalents then you can assign it here but it's not appropriate for RDF there's no same at individual as and there are some properties and for that student instances we like to have that uh, object properties or in other words in RDF terms we want to say that the student could enroll in courses so that's a very a basic uh, context and then I could go to the course so I want to initiate two courses let's say first is DBMS1 and initiate another course DBMS2 so that's the DVMS2. So I now have two courses and now I have um, two students. So now I like to say there's an uh, um, in all speaking or in the ontology web language speaking it's about like object property which uh, talks about the relationship between two objects or two classes. So I could say like the student enroll in classes or in courses. 
So to initiate that object property, I could easily go to the object property here, and I could add a sibling uh, property. Now this property I could say enroll. So that's my property. I want to enroll in uh, student enroll in class. And after that, this enroll um, it has a domain and the range. So the domain of the enroll is supposed to be student, and the range of the enroll is supposed to be a course. So I could click on here, so that the domain it's gonna be just try to locate domain is a student, and the range is a, a course. So course that's the uh, range, and there are other things like sub property of or disjoint with and so on. If you have that uh, necessary assertion to set up, then you can uh, do that. So one of the things here is inverse of, which is not available in RDF, but it's um, available in all. So if you need that in all, then you can do that. Okay, so now I could have a, a little bit more um, individuals, let's say Alex is a student, and now since I have already defined an object property assertion, I, I have already defined an object property, so I can make the object property assertion. So now I am with the Alex, and there's a object property assertion. I could say it has in row, and in its object, it's let's say DBMS1. So now I say uh, Alex in row in DBMS1, and I'd like to make one more assertion. Um, Alex also enrolls in DBMS2, let's say. And then I want to make sure, I want to make another assertion, says Tom enrolls in DBMS1. So just click on the DBMS1 again. So now I make three assertions, and there are two individual students and two individual courses, and I already made three statements about um, the, relate, the properties happening between the, the students and the course. So when you uh, go back to click on Alex, it says it has two object properties, the role in database management system one and system two, and the time in rows in database management system one. Okay, so I pretty much finished the, the, the very basic setup. Now, the one thing interesting here is there's a uh, graphical interface, uh, I mean the uh, visualization here. So when you go to there's an onto graph tab, now, when you go to this onto graph, you're gonna see um, there are it's like a pictorial representation. So, if you want to show the students, just double click on this. We do we already show the students here, and if you want to show the course, you just double click or uh, click on the course. The course is gonna come by, and you see a collapsible buttons. You just expand it, double click to expand it. It's gonna give you. Uh, more pictures what's going on here and there so we do see all the uh, this is like a um, I just want to differentiate one from another so this is like a a graphical representation of the ontology that I uh, already uh, created so I say uh, Tom this is a uh, it's a relationship in the ER diagram con um, terminology so the student, Alex is a student, and also Tom is a student, and Alex enrolls in DBMS2, and Alex enrolls in DBMS1, and then Tom enrolls in uh, DBMS1. So you see, once you click on this, that uh, link, so that dash, the relationship links, then you're going to literally see a uh, something looks like a triple. Okay, so this is the basic setup, and you could play with it in terms of its layout. If you like them to go like vertically in a hierarchy, or to go with the horizontally with the hierarchy, and then you can play with it. And you scroll down the uh, mouse, you up and down the mouse, you're gonna see its zoom in and zoom out effect. And you could also uh, save this current graph, or you could pop up just export the graph to adapt. Or uh, alternatively, you could um, take a little bit, uh, just snapshot, export this as an image if for your report purpose. Okay, so on RDF, 
the query language is important about the uh, what we call the Sparkle. And <clears throat> click on the Sparkle um, sub tab. You're gonna see a, a default template for the querying. So we could literally use the Sparkle uh, query language for querying the database or the RDF, the knowledge base that we have already created. Now one thing you have to notice is the prefix. So it has some default prefix which is fixed, universally fixed, RDF O, XSD, and RDFS. So for our case, this is our own ontology. So we have our clickbacks to the active ontology. We have our own ontology IRI. So we will have to make sure that we use the prefix for our own IRI. Otherwise, the, the query in our own I, um, Sparkle query will not work properly. So first, we'll have to set up a um, the prefix for this. So we you have to just make sure that you copy the whole things here. And you initiate another prefix. And you could give your prefix, uh, whatever prefix you like. Uh, for my case, I want to give it an ex as a prefix. And make sure that uh, you have to <coughs> follow the same type of, since we didn't overwrite the, the default separator, the fragment separator, so you have to add a pound sign at the end of your URL address. So now the ex colon, which is the prefix, for our domain, it stands for that long address. Okay, so now we could perform the queries for whatever we need. And let's say uh, I want to make one query. Let's say how many courses are there? Uh, not how many courses. I want to list the course that has been enrolled. So that's the case. Suppose I like to show the, some objects where um, I want to type the pattern where the subject, some subject, um, and prefix ex in row. And then the object has a, a, another variable. So I like to show the object of the in row. Uh, properties so once I type this in and I'm gonna execute it and I will see the results here which is um, just searching through all the available assertion and I found um, the search the interpreter found uh, s1 dbms1 dbms2 and the dbms1 again all right so now I like to see another thing is uh, the course that Tom enrolled so I could give, um, let's say that the course Tom enrolled, so I leave this object where uh, Tom, which is ex colon at uh, Tom, and ex enroll and object. So this will give you uh, the course that Tom enrolled. And you execute, oops, I have, possibly I have a typo. Okay ex colon tom all right so i execute it and this is the course that uh, tom enrolled and i could have uh, just change this to alex so this will show the course that alex enrolled so that's the course alex enrolled and i could also um, show like the course enrollment like the person who enrolled in what course so in that case i like to show the, both the subject and the object where the subject enroll in the object so this is the subject enroll in the object all right, so I execute it, and this is going to give me Alex enroll in database management system one, and Alex enroll in DPMS two and DPMS three. All right, so this will give you um, very hands-on uh, opportunity to interact with the database or the knowledge base that created using this Prodigy uh, tools, and the Sparkle is actually playable. You could 
um, have whatever you like and in, in your personal flavor. And there are other other structures like the filter structure in uh, the Sparkle, which you could also just follow the Sparkle syntax. You can look up on the W3C's documentation, find Sparkle's examples, which is pretty much uh, very easy to use. Okay, so now another the, the one last thing that I like to say is about uh, how do we save it? So we could save it um, locally as uh, other file formats, and you could local sh locally share it. So you could click on the share as, and it supports a various type of format. The first is the XML serialization in terms of the RDF uh, syntax, or you can go with the all syntax, and you could also go uh, with other like the turtle syntax. So once you select this are all XML, and then you find a location. So let's say uh, enrollment knowledge base. So this is my uh, file, local file, and then you save it, and the file has been saved. And once the file has been saved, then you can go to find that um, file, which is enrollment KB. That's a uh, old file. And next time, if you want to use it, and you could just open that from. So let's say um, ontology in the current window. Let's say no, I want to open the ontology in another window. And open this one in Roman uh, KB old file. So it's going to open in another. And all the information has been retained, like the entities. This is whatever we have. And there are some individuals which already been uh, saved. And there are some uh, well queries. And we will have to reconstruct it again because the query is not like a static thing. It's the interaction between the interpreter and the user. Okay, so this is the basic use of um, the ontology uh, tool, Prodigy. And there are also versions for the desktop use, and it's pretty much fits the same uh, functionality, but it's not a full scale of the um, the Prodigy and it's gonna load a little bit slower you can create your own projects or upload the projects to this communities and you're gonna see let's say uh, just arbitrary find airport system PMS so you're gonna see the similar tabs like um, individuals for instance it has um, lots of different kind of individuals oops it doesn't have um, no, it doesn't have individuals yet. On um, staff, aircraft staff. So it does have some um, aircraft staffs, and these are their informations and uh, properties as usual. The notes and discussion for this project, and there is a project dashboard. Um, also, you can play with. But other than that, <coughs> um, it does not have um, the full functionality of the Prodigy. And another thing which might be interesting is uh, there is a tab under the, the file called the Check for Plugins. So as you may have known, the Prodigy community, they develop lots of different plugins. And the plugins, uh, some of them might be, uh, this is all available downloads for the um, plugins, the automatic identifies. So for each of the plugins, it gives you some descriptions of what this is about. Um, for instance, there's one thing like effect plus, plus a reasoner, or uh, there are other things like if you are with the alls, there are some, for instance, um, all docs, uh, it will give you some explanation of what this is about. And the reasoning capability in terms of the all, it's not that um, important, but in, I mean, RDF, it's not that important, but in all, it might be more important. So uh, in RDF, you might not uh, interested in using playing with the reasoner, but in all, you might be more interested in uh, playing with the reasoners, which you could. Uh, customize it and you could um, play with it a little bit in a little bit different flavor. Alright, so this is a quick instruction of how to use the uh, 
a prodigy is to create your own your own knowledge base.